What up Team Up Gals, welcome to another resort review. If this place is looking different to you, it's because we got a new studio and if this is the first time seeing it, that means you're not subscribed to the channel or you're new to the channel. So hit that subscribe button. I have a goal to ride every single ski resort in the United States. We are at 72 of the 467 ski resorts. And then after we ride them, we make a resort review and let you know, like, should you go to the ski resort or what is this ski resort meant for? Like who should come ride this ski resort? And that's what we're gonna get into today. So subscribe to the channel if you're new and follow us on that journey of knocking them all out. And if you do wanna see our resort map with all the, the resorts in the United States, it's really cool, it's a website. And if you click on the green ones, you can see the videos where we've ridden. So that's your or a ski resort you can watch the video of us there riding it as well as the resort review and everything like that it has all the scores for the resort reviews check out the map website i don't know what we called that thing but check it out and uh enough talking today all right not enough talking we're gonna keep talking but today in today's video we're gonna be talking about alpine valley ski resort in wisconsin and this place is awesome it's one of the bigger ski resorts in wisconsin a lot of people like to come ride here and so let's jump into the resort and find out who is this ski resort for now how we review these resorts is we have a 10 topic like thing from like lift prices to runs to chairlifts and everything like that and each topic gets a score from zero to ten zero being not applicable they don't have it at all one being terrible five is average and ten is best in the world the best you can get and these resorts because this is a midwest resort is getting compared to like colorado utah like big mountain resorts so this is a hill this is a wisconsin ski resort uh, which is exciting. And let's see how it like holds up against, you know, like Breck, Keystone, Vale. So let's jump into this. So we always start with lift prices. How affordable is it to come here? And they got a seven when it comes to lift prices for $65 for a full day of riding or 75, including night riding. So from open to close, that's an incredible price. That's the best price you can get, but dude, seven, not bad. Ease of access, if you did want to know how to get there, or how I did it, I flew into Milwaukee and then literally that same day drove there. It's a 40 minute drive from the Milwaukee airport to the to the, the resort, but as well as all the neighboring places. It was super easy to drive there. You're not driving like an insane pass or literally anything. You're like driving through farmland and then all of a sudden you go down into a valley and then boom, there's a ski resort. It's actually pretty crazy. So they got an eight for ease of access. Like you're not gonna be battling mountain conditions trying to get to this resort. It's super easy to get there. You get in the car, you drive there, you can even fly in and then ride the same day. That's how awesome and easy it is to get there and go snowboarding. Now lodging, can you stay there? And they actually do have lodging. Like their prices were pretty fair. It was like 140, 130 or something like that for the night, which is, that's not like that expensive, for on snow lodging, that, which is super awesome. They didn't have a ton of options and then around, like there's neighboring towns and things like that, but like, it's not like Breck or Keystone or any other places with like tons of Airbnbs around, all types of like resort options for, for staying, there's like the one lodge. So they got a five for the lodging because it's available, it's average, it's there. Now let's get into the lifts. How are the lifts there? We want to ride all this stuff. Can we rip what we want? How fancy are the lifts, everything like that. And they came in with a six on the lifts. They have a plenty of chair lifts to get to the, the, the few amount of runs they have. Like every, almost every single run has a chair lift and they do have a tow rope for the park, which is super awesome, but they don't have a gondola. They don't have a bubble. They don't have a chalet, anything like that. You're literally going to be just riding kind of older, slower chair lifts but they still have a bunch that are gonna get you up the mountain super quick. But let's get into the important topic now, the runs. Like we gotta know what we're riding. Is it, like, is it sick? Are we riding trees? Like what's going on? And uh, they got a four when it comes to runs. Now, there were plenty of them. Like you could, I think there was like six or seven like good like good carverable runs, but they're super short because it's a hill, it's not a mountain and they're very similar to each other, as well as like, you're not going in the trees and skiing. There is no tree skiing, there's no big mountain riding, anything like that. Like, it's just groomed runs and, and depending on the snow they're getting, it could be icy runs. Like, so there, there wasn't anything that like blew my mind. So they got a four, like there's a bunch of them and you can ride them. So that, they're not absolutely terrible, but it's, it's not Colorado, you know what I'm saying? Now, how's their park? That's what I mainly rode when we showed up. We were night riding, but we were ripping in their park, having a good time. 
and they had fun features. They actually had really good flow with their park that was set up. We did kind of show up early, so it wasn't their end of season park, but I did go online and watch a couple of videos from last year and saw what they got for the full season for their park. And it's not bad. The jump was very Midwest where it's a big kicker to like not really a landing. And I'm still getting used to those types, <laughs> types of jumps, but uh, th th it's just not a Colorado park. It was sick, it was fun, it's below average. Uh, a lot of the builds were kind of sketchy, meaning like the lips weren't pristine, like the takeoffs to the rails, everything like that. The rails did slide really well, but overall the park just comes in a little below average. It was sick. And I know for a lot of the people that ride it, you can get really good riding there. So keep setting it. Now for the food, we ended up not actually eating at this resort because we got Culver's right before showing up, like true Wisconsin uh, way of doing it. But we walked around, we saw what they had, to, uh, like all their options and everything. And it was a pretty average lodge. Now the hotel, I believe has like, a, like two restaurants so that are kind of fancier there as well. So three options for food is pretty good. So I like to give it an average score for the food. You can go the like traditional like hot dogs and pretzels, or you can go kind of fancier food with a good price. Uh, I think the menus are great there. Now the employee score. A lot of you guys always like, don't do employees, do snow conditions, but it's so hard to do snow conditions because that varies everywhere you go. Like when I went to the East Coast this season, it literally dumped powder the whole time we were out there. We wrote powder on the East Coast, which is supposed to be icy, vice versa, like Colorado had bad snow year this year. So I could go to like Powder Mountain, get no powder and be like, oh, that's kind of lame. So I don't cover snow conditions mainly because it's, it's you can't control the weather, you know? So you can have a bad snow year, you can have a great snow year. That's not a true tell of what the mountain is, but employees can make or break your trip. You can get a great employee that makes it for you and he's super awesome, or you can get a bad employee who's just gonna ruin your whole trip or your whole day on the mountain, like I did at the Keystone incident. If you missed that video, check it out right there. And most resorts get an average score for the employees because normally it's never like something incredible happening or anything bad happening. But this one was pretty interesting. The lifty we had was talking about doing drugs and not being able to pay for his rent and all these like family issues right in front of everyone. It was like, it was so like, I don't think that's kind of appropriate, my dude, to be talking about this, especially in front of all these kids and all this stuff. And so uh, they did get dinged one point for the employees. That was just one employee who was kind of like, obviously just being a dude, but they got a four for the employees. It's just like, it, it was enough that I remembered it when I came to like think about this resort. I was like, okay, the uh, there was that one employee that was actually like saying weird, super weird stuff. We talked about him on the chairlift. He was like, like, why are, like, I can't believe he's saying that stuff in front of all these people. <laughs> now views and scenery, uh, I'd love to say it's a 10, but it's a two, sadly. Uh, we're in the Midwest, it's a, it's a hill. It's one of the tallest places around. So when you do go up it, you're tall, you get to see a bunch, there is a view. But you look at that farms, trees, like very Wisconsin looking view. So yeah, it's just a two, it's nothing special. Like there's not another hill to look at or anything, it's just flat. So the last one, would I go back? This is, I think, important because if I am like, dude, I, I won't go back there. I don't think you guys should even go in the first place. So like, would I go back to Alpine Valley? And I gave that a four out of 10. I would go back because it's 20 minutes from my grandma's house. And once again, it was, I could fly in Wisconsin, go right there. And, it wasn't terrible. I'd like to ride it during the day, not at night, but there's nothing like that I left being like, that was special, that was magical. I definitely need to go back there. The park isn't pulling me back or like a certain feature. I, I mean, I would, like snowboarding, if it's available, I'll do it it's right next to my grandma's house, but I'm not super duper eager to go back. Now, who is this mountain for? I would say it's for the average rider who is working on getting their S turns dialed, maybe some carving. If you're getting into terrain park, if you like park riding, they're gonna build a two jump line for you. You're gonna have some down, flat, down rails, some flat bars. You'll be able to get a lot of cool rail tricks, especially with that tow rope. So who is it for? I would say more of the park rider slash intermediate, like low intermediate. If you're above intermediate and you wanna do like tree riding, it's like that's not for you. If you have a family of like a bunch of young kids, this is a great resort to go to. You can stay on the mountain for super cheap. They can go do all their turns and get good at snowboarding. So that's who this mountain I think is really for. But I know you guys wanna know, what did they get? Score zero to 100, what's their score? Uh, and where do they compare to a Colorado ski resort? And sadly, Wisconsin, this is the first resort to come in under an average score. By one point, they came in at a 49 out of 100. So this is our first below average ski resort. 
but a 49 is still incredible for a Midwest Wisconsin ski resort. We'll see if any other ones blow this one out of the water. I think a lot of the Wisconsin ones are going to take some hits because of getting zeros for things like lodging and, and other stuff like that. So overall, I, I think they, I think Alpine Valley is sick. And if you guys can go, do go. But I want to hear from you. Are you an Alpine Valley shredder? Are you from the Midwest? Do you ride in Wisconsin? Was my re review fair? Comment down below. This is a conversation. If you know something secret, like you have like the best place to stay or the best place to eat, whatever, share that in the comments because the goal of these videos is to help other people plan awesome trips or maybe save money by not going spending all their money to go to Colorado and then they come to uh, out like Wisconsin and then all, all of a sudden they still get to have awesome snowboarding and it fit their family's needs stuff like that so share all of that in the comments once again if you're new to the channel subscribe because there's gonna be plenty more of these videos especially through the whole summer we have about like 60 more of these that we can make and we're gonna try to make about two a week during the summer, I don't want to kill you guys with resort reviews, but I want to pump them out so next season people can find these and once again, find out where they're going to go snowboarding. Lastly, if you guys could just smash that like button, that does help the videos. It lets more people find these videos. So the more people that can find it, once again, the whole thing that I've been selling this whole video. And then if you do want any of my Evolution merch, the hoodies or hats, t-shirts, any of it, guys, it's in the description. Snag an Evolution sticker. The stickers are the, the main way that I can make these trips and do this stuff. By snagging the merch, it allows me to go to other ski resorts to continue to make these videos so if you do want to consider supporting the channel snag some merch and then tag me on my instagram i'll give you guys gear and sticker shout outs but also follow the instagram for bonus extra content it's where i post where i'm riding each day so if you're at the same ski resort with me there's a good chance you can ride into me we can take some laughs together but just the content's more fun if you go check it out on my instagram and my tiktok follow the tiktok i'm not a big tiktoker but it's a thing and you got to do it so if you're on tiktok follow the tiktok all right, Team Up Gals, with that, thank you so much for reviewing a ski resort with me today. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. We'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm on top of the ocean, living like life ain't frozen, feeling my feet been chosen for something other than motion, yeah. Mama told me I'ma be somebody. I ain't never gonna need nobody, no, no. I ain't never gonna need nobody, no. Cliff.